Dominoes, Level 1, Macbeth by William Shakespeare, text adaptation by Alistair McCallum, read by Rupert Farley, Joe Hall, Kirsty Hamilton, John Hasler, Lawrence Kennedy, Hugh Kermode, David Shaw Parker and Mandy Weston. Published and copyright Oxford University Press, 2010. Chapter 1 Soldier, General, King It was a cold, dark, rainy day in Scotland a thousand years ago. Three witches waited. What is going to happen, sisters? We are going to meet someone. Who are we going to meet, sisters? Macbeth. When are we going to meet him? After the battle. Who can help us? said Duncan. King of Scotland. The King of Norway wants to take our country. His soldiers are here, and they're killing my men. Duncan waited for many hours in his camp to hear about the battle. Things were very bad. Duncan was afraid. Suddenly, a Scottish soldier ran into the camp and came in front of the king. He was tired and dirty from the battle, and there was blood on his face. My lord! He cried. The Norwegian general is dead. The Norwegian soldiers are running away. Scotland is free once again! That's wonderful, said King Duncan. Who killed their general? His name is Macbeth, and he's the best soldier in Scotland. Macbeth was tired. He walked slowly to King Duncan's camp with his friend Banquo. What a long battle, said Macbeth. A lot of our friends are dead, said Banquo. But the Norwegian soldiers are going home, and they're never coming back. Suddenly, they saw the three witches in front of them. Who are you? What are you doing? asked Banquo. They didn't speak to him, but they looked at Macbeth. Macbeth! cried the witches. What? How do you know my name? he asked. They spoke again, all at the same time. Macbeth, the soldier. Macbeth, the general. Macbeth! The king. General? King? What are these women talking about? Macbeth asked Banquo. I'm a soldier, nothing more. Is this true? Banquo asked them. Can you see into the future? Speak to me. What can you tell me? The witches looked at him. Banquo, the father of kings. Who are you? asked Macbeth. Tell us more! 
But suddenly, the witches weren't there. Macbeth and Banquo looked here and there, but they could see nobody. Perhaps they were witches, said Macbeth. Banquo laughed. Or perhaps we are tired after the battle, and we imagined them, he answered. King Duncan was very happy when Macbeth and Banquo arrived at his camp. Well done, my brave friends. Macbeth, I want to say thank you from everyone in Scotland. Macbeth, you are now the general of the Scottish army. Everyone was excited. Macbeth, the bravest man in Scotland! They cried. But Macbeth and Banquo stood quietly and thought about the three witches' words. Macbeth, the soldier. Macbeth, the general. Macbeth, the king. At Macbeth's home, his wife, Lady Macbeth, waited day after day. But one day, a letter arrived. It was a long letter from her husband. After the battle, Banquo and I met three women. They were witches, and they can see into the future. You're going to be a general, they told me. And they were right. Next, they said, Macbeth, you're going to be king. I can't stop thinking about it. Lady Macbeth was excited. Her husband, king of Scotland. I want to be queen of Scotland, she thought. The witches are right. My husband is going to be king. Nothing can stop us. She began reading again. King Duncan is coming to stay with us soon. His son Malcolm is coming too. And Banquo. And Macduff. We must be ready. Lady Macbeth cried excitedly. King Duncan? In our house? Good. He's king now. But things are going to change. Scotland is going to have a new king. When Macbeth came home, his wife began to talk about their future. We're going to be rich and happy, she said, when you are king. But Macbeth wasn't happy. What are you talking about? he cried. How can I be king? Scotland has a king. Listen. You're a soldier, and you often kill men in battles, said his wife. King Duncan is coming here tonight. What are you saying? asked Macbeth. You must be brave. Remember the witches. You are going to be king. Duncan must die here in our house. What's the matter? Are you afraid? That evening, King Duncan arrived at Macbeth's house with his son Malcolm and with Banquo. What a beautiful house, said King Duncan. Yes, my lord, and the garden is wonderful too, said Banquo. 
It was a sunny afternoon, and the king and Banquo walked slowly past the trees and flowers to Macbeth's door. Lady Macbeth came out of the house. Thank you for visiting us, my lord. We're very happy to see you. Lady Macbeth, said the king warmly. How are you? And where is your husband, the general? Is he well? Lady Macbeth smiled. Yes, my lord. He is waiting to meet you. Please, come in. He is a brave man, you know, said King Duncan. He killed many of our enemies. Scotland is free once more, and we must thank your husband for that. In the evening, everyone had dinner. They all sat at a big table. The king, Malcolm, Macbeth and his wife, Banquo, and all their friends. Everyone ate, drank wine, talked, and laughed. But Macbeth left the room early. His wife came out to find him. I can't do it, said Macbeth. I can't kill Duncan. He's our king and a good man. Let's forget about it. What? cried Lady Macbeth angrily. Remember the witches. You are going to be king. Do you want to wait for years and years? Are you a man or are you afraid? Of course I'm not afraid. But things can always go wrong. Nothing can go wrong. Listen, Duncan has two servants. Tonight, I'm going to give them a lot of wine. When they're sleeping, you can go into Duncan's room. You must use their knives. Do you understand? Yes. And we can put blood on his servant's hands, said Macbeth. That's right, said Lady Macbeth. And what are people going to think when they find the dead king tomorrow? His servants killed him, of course, not you. Now, you see the bell over there. Tonight, when everything is ready, I'm going to ring it. Be brave, my husband. Chapter 2 Murder in the Night It was late at night. It was dark in the house. But Macbeth wasn't in bed. He was downstairs. Suddenly, he heard a noise. Who's there? he called. It's me, answered Banquo. It's late, and I'm going to bed. Me too, said Macbeth. Do you remember those three women? They called you a general and a king. Which women? Oh, those three. No, I never think about them. Good. It's best to forget about them. Good night, Macbeth. Good night, Banquo. It was after midnight. Everyone in the house was in bed. But downstairs, Macbeth waited and waited. I can see something, he thought. Is it a dagger? It's there. In front of my eyes. He put his hand out. I can see it, but I can't take it in my hand. 
What's happening? Am I imagining things? Suddenly he heard a noise. It was the bell. No more words, he thought. It's time to do it. Duncan must die. Lady Macbeth was in her room. Everything is going well, she thought. Duncan's servants are sleeping because they drank a lot of wine. Their daggers are on the table so my husband can find them. Suddenly Macbeth came into the room. In his hands were the two daggers. There was blood on them. I can hear voices, he said quietly. People are talking. Listen. Someone is crying murder. Can you hear? No, I can't. You're imagining things. There are no voices. Everyone is sleeping, said Lady Macbeth. Then she saw the servant's daggers in Macbeth's hands. Why are you carrying those? She asked angrily. Take them back to Duncan's room and put them next to his servants. Why did you forget? Macbeth didn't move. I'm not going back, he said. Give them to me then, said his wife. Why are you afraid? Duncan is dead. He can't hurt us now. She took the daggers and went quickly to Duncan's room. After some time, Lady Macbeth came back to her room. The servants have blood on their hands and faces now, she said to her husband. So they are the king's killers, of course, not us. Everyone's going to think that. Just then, they heard a noise. It was a loud knock. There was someone at the front door. Macbeth was afraid, and he couldn't move or speak. There was another knock. And another Come on, said Lady Macbeth. We must wash our hands. Our servant can go to the door. Macbeth's servant opened the door. The visitor was Macduff. He was a soldier and one of Duncan's friends. Good morning, sir, said the servant. Everyone is sleeping, I think. Shall I wake the general? Just then, Macbeth came downstairs. Macbeth! Good morning, my friend, said Macduff. King Duncan wants to see me today. He asked me to call early in the morning. Is the king upstairs? Yes. He is. He's sleeping, I think. Shall I go and wake him? asked Macbeth. No, that's all right. Can you take me to his room? The two men went upstairs to the king's room, and Macduff went in. At once, Macduff came out of the room again, and his face was white. This is terrible! Terrible! The king is dead! It's murder! The king? Dead? said Macbeth. No! It isn't true! Go in and look! I cannot tell you more! answered Macduff. Then he began to call. Wake up! Get out of bed, everyone! Banquo! Malcolm! 
There's a murderer in the house! Doors opened. People came out of their rooms. And everybody began talking at the same time. Lady Macbeth came out of her room. What's the matter? Why is there all this noise? She asked. My lady, I have terrible news, said Macduff. Our king, your father Malcolm, he's dead. Someone murdered him in the night. Oh no, cried Banquo. Is it true? Who killed him? I don't know, said Macduff. His servants, perhaps. There's blood on their hands and on their daggers. I wanted to talk to them, but I couldn't wake them. Just then, Macbeth came out of Duncan's room. Those servants were murderers, but they're never going to hurt anyone again. I killed them. Why did you do that? asked Macduff angrily. Now we can't ask them any questions. How can we learn the truth about the king's murder now? I'm sorry, said Macbeth. I was angry. You must understand. Who can stop and think when a terrible murder happens? They murdered our king. Our wonderful king! And so, I killed them. Suddenly, Lady Macbeth cried out and fainted. Oh. Oh. Carry the lady to her room, said Banquo. Listen, everyone. Later this morning, when we are ready, we must all meet and talk about this terrible news. We must be careful. Scotland has new enemies. Chapter 3 A New King The king's son, Malcolm, was worried. I must leave at once, he thought. Someone murdered my father. Perhaps they're going to kill me too. I must get help, for me and for my country. Perhaps the King of England can help me. I must go and see. He spoke to no one, but he got on his horse and he left Macbeth's house quickly. Later, all the most important people in Scotland met and talked about the terrible news. Who's going to be our new king? they asked. What about Duncan's son, Malcolm? Malcolm isn't in Scotland with us now. He ran away when his father died. Then what about Macbeth? He's our best soldier and the general of our army. Let's make him our king. Yes, Macbeth! Macbeth. Everyone cried excitedly. Macbeth! King of Scotland! Banquo was alone in a big room in Macbeth's castle. The witches were right about Macbeth, he thought. He's the king now. He's rich, and he lives in the biggest castle in Scotland. But how did Duncan die? Did Macbeth murder him? Yes, he did, I think. And I'm afraid. Then Banquo remembered the witch's words. Banquo, 
The Father of Kings. Banquo thought about his son, Fleance. Perhaps Fleance is going to be king one day. Just then, Macbeth and his wife, the Queen, came into the room. Many lords, ladies, and servants came in with them. Banquo, my good friend," said Macbeth. "We are having a banquet at the castle this evening. Can you come? Of course, my lord," answered Banquo. Are you going to ride this afternoon? Yes, my lord. Are you going far? No, my lord. I'm coming back later this evening. Remember the banquet. Of course, my lord. And are you riding alone, or with your son? Fleance is coming with me, my lord," answered Banquo. "And we're leaving soon. Good. Banquo, did you hear about Malcolm?" asked Macbeth. "He murdered his father, King Duncan. We all know the truth now. And I have more terrible news." Macbeth went on. Malcolm's in England now, and he's making trouble. We must talk tomorrow, perhaps. Macbeth smiled at Banquo when he left, but he wasn't happy. Macbeth was worried. He too remembered the witch's words. Banquo. The father of kings. Does Banquo know the truth about Duncan's murder? And did I murder Duncan for Banquo's son to be king after me? He cried. Later, when Macbeth was alone, a servant came into the room. There are two visitors here. They want to see you, my lord," he said. "Good, I'd like to see them now," answered Macbeth. The two men came in. "I have some important work for you," said Macbeth. "There is a man called Banquo. He's a good man, everyone thinks, but it's not true." He is our enemy. He must die. Do you understand? Yes, yes my lord, lord," said the two men. We're, We're not, not afraid. afraid. Good. He's riding with his son now. When they come back this evening, you must kill them. Remember. His son must die too. The men left, and soon after, Lady Macbeth came in. Why are you here, my lord? Far from your friends. What are you thinking of? She asked. She looked at his worried face. All right, you killed Duncan, she said. But when you can't change something, don't think about it. Yes, answered Macbeth. You're right. Duncan is dead, but Banquo and his son Fleance live. And what can we do about that? Asked Lady Macbeth. Don't ask me now, my love. Smiled Macbeth. But wait and see. When Banquo and his son came back to the castle, it was dark. They got off their horses and began walking to the castle door. Suddenly, 
two men ran out from behind some trees. Who are you? What do you want? asked Banquo. The two men didn't answer. Are you ready? said one of the men. Let's do it now! The two men suddenly took out their daggers and stabbed Banquo. They were very quick, and Banquo couldn't stop them. They're going to kill me, Fleance! But you must stay alive! He cried. Run, Fleance! Run! Fleance ran away at once. Quick! Let's go after him! said one of the murderers. We must get him too! Or the king's going to be very angry. The murderers ran after Fleance, but they couldn't find him because it was dark. Chapter 4 a Ghost at the Table At the king's castle, everything was ready for the banquet. All the most important lords and ladies in Scotland were there. Please! Come into the dining room and sit down at the table, everyone said Lady Macbeth. Just then, two men arrived at the castle. The Queen and all the lords and ladies went into the dining room and sat down at the table. But Macbeth waited for a short time before he went after them. He spoke quietly to the two men. There's blood on your face, he said to the first man. It's Banquo's blood, my lord, said the man. Is Banquo dead, then? asked Macbeth. Yes, my lord, said the man happily. I killed him with my knife. Good man said Macbeth. And tell me, did you kill Fleance too? No, my lord. Fleance ran away. Oh, no! cried Macbeth angrily. Why is it all going wrong? Fleance is alive! And he must die too. But Banquo's dead, you say? Yes, my lord. Dead and cold. Good. So, Banquo's dead, but Flehaunt's lives. Well, come back here tomorrow. We must meet again and talk more about this. It's very important. The two men left. Just then, Lady Macbeth came out of the dining room. What's the matter, my love? Everyone is waiting for you. Come and eat with us. Macbeth went into the dining room. There were a lot of people in the room and there was a lot of food and wine on the table. Where's my good friend Banquo? asked Macbeth. He isn't here. He's late. It doesn't matter, said Lady Macbeth. Come and sit down. Your chair is here. Macbeth walked to the table. 
Then he stopped suddenly. There was a ghost in his chair. The ghost looked up at him. It was Banquo, and his face was bloody. What's happening? cried Macbeth. He was afraid. The ghost looked at him, but didn't speak. Why are you looking at me? I didn't do it! Macbeth cried. Everyone at the table looked at Macbeth. What's wrong, my lord? They asked. Why are you worried? They couldn't see the ghost, but Macbeth could see it. I'm sorry, everyone. My husband isn't well, said Lady Macbeth. She took Macbeth out of the room. What's the matter with you? She asked angrily. You're imagining things again. First, it was a dagger in front of you on the night of Duncan's murder. And now, this ghost. What's wrong? Don't be afraid. Be a man. Be brave. There's no one in your chair. But he's a dead man. How can he come back? Said Macbeth. And how can you look at him and not be afraid? What are you talking about? What are people going to think? There is no ghost. Your friends at the table are worried. Now, go back and sit in your chair. They went back into the dining room. Macbeth couldn't see the ghost now, so he sat down happily. I'm sorry, my friends, he said to his visitors. Sometimes I feel ill and I begin to imagine things. But please, don't worry about me. I'm better now. Come on, let's have some wine. Let's drink to our friend Banquo. He isn't here with us tonight, and I'm sorry for that. Just then, Banquo's ghost came through the door and walked across the room. Macbeth cried out again. Get away from me! He stood up suddenly. You're dead! Dead and cold! There's no blood in you! And those terrible eyes! Don't look at me! Leave me alone! What's the king saying? asked the lords and ladies at the table. What's he looking at? Why is he afraid? Lady Macbeth was worried. Don't listen to him. I'm sorry, everyone. You must all go. She cried. The king is ill. No more questions, please. He gets worse when you ask him questions. Please, go now. Don't wait. Go, at once. The visitors all left, and the castle was quiet. It was very late, but Macbeth didn't go to bed. He sat and thought for a long time. Macduff didn't come to our banquet, he said. Why not? I asked him to come. When the king speaks, everyone must listen. Is Macduff my enemy now too? 
You look tired, said his wife. You must sleep. I can't sleep. I'm not happy. Everything is going wrong. Macbeth thought for a minute. I know, he said. Tomorrow, I'm going to find the witches. I want to ask them some questions. I must know the truth. The three witches were in a dirty old hut. In front of them was a big pot on a fire. They put a lot of strange and terrible things in the pot: an animal's head, a tooth. A dead man's hand, some blood. Someone is coming, sisters. Just then, Macbeth ran into the hut. Listen, he said at once. I have some important questions, and I need answers. Do you understand? I want to know more about the future. Chapter Five: The Witches Tell Macbeth More. Watch and listen," said the witches. The fire under the pot got bigger and bigger. Suddenly, there was the noise of thunder. Then Macbeth saw something strange over the witch's pot. It was a soldier's head. Macbeth began to speak. But the witches stopped him. He knows your question, they said. Listen, but don't speak. The soldier's head looked at Macbeth and cried, "Macbeth, Macduff is going to hurt you. Be careful." I'm going to remember that," thought Macbeth. Macduff must die. There was more thunder. The head went suddenly from in front of Macbeth's eyes, and now over the pot, there was a baby. There was blood on its face and body, but it smiled at Macbeth. Be happy, Macbeth. No mother's son can hurt you," said the baby. "Good," thought Macbeth. "Everyone has a mother. I'm safe." Next came a young boy. There was a crown on his head. And he had a tree in his hand. Your enemies cannot hurt you, Macbeth," he said. "But when the trees near your castle begin to walk, there is going to be trouble." Macbeth laughed at this. <laughs> good, very good. Trees can't walk. I'm going to live safely for a long, long time. But Macbeth had one last question for the witches. When we last met, you called Banquo the father of kings. Is this true? Do not ask. Said the witches. 
Why do you want to know? Tell me! cried Macbeth angrily. Just then, a man walked across the room. And a second, and a third. And they all had crowns on their heads. They were kings of Scotland. The kings of the future. And they were Banquo's children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. No! cried Macbeth. It's not true! After all the kings came a ghost. It was the ghost of Banquo. He looked at Macbeth and smiled. Macbeth ran back to his castle. He was angry with the witches. They called Banquo the father of kings. And Fleance is alive! Later, one of Macbeth's spies came to the castle. My lord, I have some news about Macduff. He is in England with Malcolm. I think they're going to make trouble for us. Well, Macduff, thought Macbeth, you are in England... But your wife and children are here in Scotland. You are safe, but they are not. They're going to die. All of them. When Macduff arrived in England, Malcolm was happy to see him. Macduff, my good friend, do you have any news from Scotland? He asked. Only bad news, Malcolm. Macbeth isn't a king. He's a murderer. He killed your father, and he wants to kill all his enemies. Everyone in Scotland is afraid of him. We must stop him now. Or the people of Scotland can never be happy again. We must stop him before he does worse things. Just then, a messenger arrived from Scotland. He had some terrible news for Macduff. What is it? asked Macduff quickly. Your wife, my lord. Your wife... And all your children are dead, said the man. For a minute, Macduff stood quietly and said nothing. And then suddenly he found his voice. What? All my family? Dead? And I wasn't there! I couldn't help them! he cried. Who did this? No, wait. You don't need to tell me. I know. It was Macbeth. I'm going to kill him for this. Macduff, nothing can bring back your family, said Malcolm. But perhaps I can help you. Listen, the King of England is my friend. He knows about Macbeth. He's going to help us. An army of 10,000 English soldiers is ready. We're going to attack Macbeth's castle. Are you going to come with us? It was late at night. One of Lady Macbeth's servants was with the doctor. I'm worried about the queen, said the servant. At night, 
When she's sleeping, she sometimes gets up and walks out of her room. She talks and does strange things. When she talks in her sleep, what does she say? Asked the doctor. I'm sorry, sir, but I don't want to tell anyone. Look, here she comes now. Lady Macbeth's door opened, and she walked out. She carried a candle in her hand. Her eyes are open, but she's sleeping," said the doctor. Where did she find the candle? She always has a candle by her bed, sir," said the servant. She's afraid of the night, and doesn't like it when it's dark. Lady Macbeth put down the candle and began to speak. We must wash our hands. Are you a man? Or are you afraid? No one is going to know the truth. What's this? Blood. In her sleep, she looked at her hands and cried. There's blood on my hands. He was an old man, but he had a lot of blood on him. Did you hear that? Said the doctor. What is she saying? It's terrible. Lady Macbeth went on talking. Macduff's wife and their children. Where are they now? More blood. What are you looking at? There's no ghost. Look, Banquo's dead. I tell you. He can't come back from the dead. Go to bed. There is a knock at the door. Come, give me your hand. Go to bed. Then Lady Macbeth stopped talking and went back to her room.